integration and integration. What is social media anxiety disorder? Social media anxiety disorder is a mental illness that is related to generalized social anxiety. It manifests when social media interferes with mental and physical health of a human being. Individuals who have social media anxiety disorder fear that interacting with people will give rise to situations of being judged and experiencing inferiority. It often leads to depression, and feelings of inadequacy and embarrassment. After depression and alcoholism, social anxiety disorder is considered as the third leading psychological disorder.
Sure, we can do something about climate change now. But if we find out in 50 years that the researchers made a mistake and that climate change doesn't exist. On December 14th, 2012, in the middle of reading about the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School, I threw up in my kitchen sink. We would have improved air quality in all major cities. On Wednesday, when my iPhone buzzed. Gotten rid of noisy and smelly cars. With a report that dozens of young people and their teachers have been shot in the Florida school. Cleaned up toxic rivers and destroyed dictatorships funded on money from oil for no reason. I skimmed the news alert and then went out to dinner. It's not that I don't care.
night falls on Charlottesville, the streets are now calm. Police have restored order to the residents here. They're just now beginning to come to grips with what happened here. History and figure out where are these contributions that have been made by these other categories of people that you're talking about. If the, what, where did any other subgroup of people contribute more to civilization? Than white people? Than, than Western civilization itself that's rooted in Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and the United States of America. October the 31st, something Johnson's detractors say he's aiming for. Downing Street was trying to keep that document a secret. La mobilisation monstre à l'échelle planétaire permet aux participants de la manifestation pour le climat à Montréal de rêver grand. De voir que ça marche littéralement autant ailleurs dans la planète, ça va encourager les gens à venir avec nous la semaine prochaine. Puis il y aura dramatic footage has emerged of the Japanese tsunami in March, shot by an onboard camera on a car belonging to Yuma Roga. It shows the moment that waters flood a busy main road and the chaos that ensues. Operation Yellowhammer, which was the government's document for its preparation of a no deal Brexit. The government had been ordered to release that. Well, it's a Kalinda Grabar Kitarovich, who's uh, not exactly a political newcomer. She's a former foreign minister and a member of the Conservative uh, Croatian so if Democratic you see somebody getting Union. Ready to throw she has won less than 1% of the vote separated her. Today, we are accustomed to 24-7 news coverage. But before the Munich massacre some 47 years ago, terrorist threats and attacks didn't get the airtime they do now. September 5, 1972 marks the start of live terrorism television reporting. The Munich massacre was the first time the world came face to face with terrorism. Since, we've been bombarded with live reporting, tweeting, sharing, and commenting. The news media learned terrorism captivates audiences and brings higher ratings and revenues, which in turn help terrorists by projecting an exaggerated sense of their power. The first time the Olympics was broadcast live, almost a billion people watched as terrorists hijacked the airwaves and the massacre unfolded in real time. Through that event, the news media, governments, and terrorists learned fear is captivating and has since used it to their advantage. From Munich to 9-11, the simple act of watching terror acts increase ratings, thus encouraging more terror attacks. But in the age of social media and smartphones, cameras, we are active participants in spreading fear and provoking terror. Center-left coalition government in power in Croatia for a number of years. They have not been able to stop this dire recession that Croatia has been stuck in for more than six years now. And uh, there's going to be a general election that has been held sometime before February 2016. This year, however, La police canadienne a confirmé la cause du décès des fugitifs canadiens Briar Schmigelski et Cam McLeod après que leurs corps ont été découverts près du rivage de la rivière Nelson jeudi dernier. Schmigelski et McLeod sont suspectés de meurtre de l'homme australien Lucas Fowler, de sa compagne américaine Tina Dees et du botaniste Leonard Dick. Mardi matin, la gendarmerie royale canadienne a révélé que le médecin légiste du Manitoba a complété l'autopsie et a confirmé l'identité des cadavres étant bien ceux de Schmigelski et McLeod. Les autorités ont aussi confirmé que la cause du décès des deux fugitifs fut un suicide par arme à feu.
Today we are accustomed to 24/7 news coverage. Today we are accustomed to 24/7 news coverage. But before the Munich massacre, some 47 years ago, terrorists didn't get the airtime they did. September 5, 1972, September 5, 1972, marks the start of live terrorism. Through that event, news media, governments, and terrorists. Through that event, the news media, governments, and terrorists learned that fear is captivating. From Munich and to 9/11, the simple act of watching terrorists. From Munich to 9/11, the simple act of watching terror attacks. attacks. Increased but ratings, in thus encouraging media. more terror attacks. And but in the age of social media and smartphone we cameras, are we are part active participants in spreading, in spreading fear and, and provoking terror. Today we are accustomed to 24-7 news coverage, but before the Munich massacre some 47 years ago, terrorist threats didn't get the airtime they do now. September 5th, 1972 marks the start of live terror. Television reporting. The Munich massacre is the first time the world can face the face of terror. The truth is bombarded.
Media manipulation exploits the difference between perception and reality. Fifteen male billionaires own American new media companies. Thirty years ago, 90% of media was held by 50 different companies. Now, six corporations control 90% of the media in America. Broadband companies have the incentive and ability to discriminate online due to a lack of competition for high-speed internet access. When the news is decided not by what is important but by what readers are clicking, when the cycle is so fast that the news cannot be anything else but consistently incomplete, when dubious scandals scuttle election bids or knock billions from the market caps of publicly traded companies, when the news frequently covers itself by saying how the story unfolded, media manipulation is the status quo. Will 